Welcome back to Ratchet and Clank Going Commando Developer Commentary. Uh, this episode in the Silver City on Planet Bulldan. I'm Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. Uh, so yeah, this is another one of my wonderful, brilliant levels, if I am to be so humble about it. <laughs> you are, nobody is as humble as you, Tony. Designed by Colin Munson, arted up by your friend and mine, Lloyd Murphy. Oh, yep, Lloyd Murphy. This was before I was really friends with Lloyd Murphy, and I thought he was kind of cold, but then I realized he was just British, <laughs> and that's really what it was all. And so that's where the confusion is that's actually. That's racist, Tony. <laughs> I don't think British is a race. I that's think that's countryist. That's culture, Tony. Yeah. I'm culturist. It's kind of weird that this starts off with a taxi. Um, yeah, well, you have Whoa. to open up that gate. Yeah, and that's not a good elevator for camera. <laughs> uh, are are there? In oh God! Yeah, this is a this is one of the more brutal levitator segments, I think. I remember doing the prototyping for this, uh, like uh, when Colin was prototyping this segment, because I think he designed it. Uh, oh, oh, wow. oh wow! We are wow. That's mean. Uh, I I coded up these rotating mobies and stuff for him to use uh, in his prototype level. Yeah, I don't think I did this levitator segment uh, necessarily. I think a lot of this was using generic stuff, uh, but I was I did a little bit of debugging, uh, is all I know. Uh, I did do that effect, I think, on that force field back there. Oh no, or, or I might have stolen it. But if I that stole it, it, yeah, if I stole it, it's mine. So. <laughs> The electricity, this electricity effect has a story, doesn't it? Uh, well, another stolen effect, uh, as most of my effects are. You uh, stole I, from Roberto, right? This was the Tesla claw effect that I stole and made static. From Ratchet swag. 1. From Ratchet and Clank 1. Well, it's also in this game, which is why I was able to steal it so easily. God, you just don't have good luck with elevators in the camera, do you? No, not really. It, it's a tight space. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, stop here. This is, if you zoom in on those guys over there, this is my favorite little idling behavior. And this one's 100% Colin. Uh, his genius. Oh, is it not these guys? Not these guys. I'm an idiot. Uh, There's some guys here that should be doing some fun idling behavior. And hopefully they're in this level. Otherwise, I'm an idiot. There they are. Yeah, I knew they were up here. But yeah, that one's entirely on Colin. After we did uh, some of the little talking things in the tribesmen or whatever, Colin decided to humor me and come up with these stupid little things for guys to do. And in this one, he decided to do rock, paper, scissors. And I was totally on board. And they, they play real rock, paper, scissors, right? Right. Oh, God, these guys have huge boots. Yeah. Oh, destructible cover. Yeah, this was the other thing that Colin wanted to really push in this level, is uh, using cover. Uh, having the enemies hide behind it, and more cover for for the player. And having uh, it having it be destructible. Right. This is where he really started to push it. And um, that, that destructible cover, uh, Mobia, is uh, Colin's art. Right. Uh, and I think, I think I coded the initial prototype of the destructible cover. And then someone else recoded it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that that destructible cover Moby was used in multiple games, and it's just designer art. And I think the uh, the uh, henchmen in this level, the ones with the shoot the blue effect, that's probably the favorite effect, my favorite effect that I did in this game. And that's the last effect ever, right? Uh, not necessarily that one. The uh, the orange one is the last effect ever. Uh, but that one was a little was slightly different because that one has a an actual piece of environment art, well art on it uh, that gives it its shape and then it uses some effects to fall off of it. So it's a it's a little bit different. But I was really happy with that effect. That's probably my favorite one that I did. Lava gun it, brutalizes the cover, man. Yeah, for sure. This is where. Uh, this is, I think, this level is where another huge difficulty spike occurred uh, in terms of the gameplay. Oh, definitely. Right, this is where the Insomniac Museum teleporter is. And the reason uh, we put it here 
is because it overlooks this clock. The clock. So the, I was actually talking to Lloyd about this recently. If you look at that clock, uh, those clock hands are ridiculous. And uh, we were talking about this very recently, that we decided to do this clock, and I talked to Lloyd. If you go to the sniper rifle, you could probably zoom in a little bit closer. Sure. Um, and he remembers me going up to ask him to make clock hands, and he gave me a circle and this weird triangle. And I don't, that big, ugly one, that is clearly not him because it's big and ugly. I probably made that one. <laughs> but he has a, a circle and a triangle that's supposed to be the clock hands, and it's so bizarre. And I asked him what he was thinking when he made those, and he's, he admits he has no idea what he was thinking because clearly for function, they're not right at all. So the, the minute hand is the circle. The second yeah. hand is that little arrow, and then the... Yeah. Right. So yeah, that, and the... I think there's also a time of day where a platinum bolt appears here. Maybe. No, just the teleport. This is yeah. just the teleport. I think there's like a nanotech or something that appears at a different time. No, I think it's just there. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm um, thinking of a different fountain. But yeah, so the uh, the other thing about the, the clock, which was a bit weird, is... Uh, Initially, it was supposed to be a 100% real-time clock. It was supposed to be exactly what the time was is exactly what the time of the spot. But, strangely enough, and I don't know how this came to be, looking up the time on the PlayStation 2 is incredibly expensive. Really? Massively expensive. And so, uh, when I first put in the clock thing, it, it starts off okay. With the first couple times you check the time, it, it works okay. But after about half an hour of polling the time constantly, it becomes horribly unstable. So I would put I put in the clock check, and then suddenly when we were playing the game, like the game would start slowing down over time and eventually become unplayable. And we were like, what the hell is going on? And it and was that, we, huh? We debugged it and we debugged it, and it came down to if you're polling the time constantly on the PlayStation 2, you're going to crush your frame rate. Do you remember how and to go so, get that bolt, by the way? The, that's the spider bot. You have to use the spider bot from the other side. The oh. Will it. oh, I'll go buy the spider bot then. So, what ended up happening was the. Um, it basically sets the time when you load up the level. And then it just sort of advances time as you would normally advance time. But because of that, if the frame rate ever slows down or whatever, the clock can become out of sync. And I really, it really bothers me at, to this day that that clock can go very far out of sync. Because you can only pull it a certain number of times. I can only pull it when you load the level. That's the only time I pull oh, it. Oh, you pull And then the rest of it is all just based on how far... It's just real time ticking every... Every frame. 30 frames or whatever, yeah. Right, yeah, 60 yeah, yeah. frames. Crazy. I know. You know what, though, Tony? Uh, unacceptable. I know. Well, I tried, but it's just, it wouldn't allow me to do it properly. Are, are you blaming the, the PlayStation engineers, Tony? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm blaming the PlayStation engineers for writing some ridiculous... What is that sound? There's something alive. It's stuck somewhere. There he is. Oh, oh, oh my god. That is horrible. You're bad at swarmers, dude. And I had to call that one out, too. That's sad. <laughs> I was just going to run right by it. But uh, you know what? If you wanted to see it, you wanted to see it. Man, that is an unfair puzzle. Oh, you know what? I think there's one of those unfair puzzles in Todano that we just completed, also. Mm. Uh, if I I, I kind of remember setting up a spider bot puzzle there. 